<laughs> so the E3 thing just happened, and that's exciting because I'm here in Beverly Hills, California, 90210. See, they packed up the truck and said you ought to move to Beverly Hills, that is. Movie stars. I don't know. There's a fountain behind me. I'm outside. Yeah, it's another one of those videos where I'm outside. But let's face it, you're not here for the production values. Probably. You're here for my random thoughts and ramblings and stuff. So I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. It's the AMD Next Horizon gaming event. And they're launching products. So the 16 core, a lot of people theorize the 16 core, 3950X, yes. And I can't help but notice 2950X, 3950X, 16 cores coming to the mainstream platform, the larger caches. Personally, I'm still looking out for what's next with Threadripper because I need the PCI Express lanes and the memory capacity. But when we you know, saw a G Skill, they had their 32 gigabyte DIMMs, those are coming. So you could do 128 gigs in, in four slots in the, in the very near future. So yeah, now we actually gotta go hands-on with that system and a lot of other systems. And we actually got to go hands-on with the actual engineers, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, you know, they, they brought four guys on stage, and, and it was like the, the father of Zen and the Radeon Technologies group people. And a lot of these people have been with AMD for a long time, or they've borrowed a lot of stuff, and we learned about Navi, or Navi, which I will talk more about uh, in a minute. But AMD was, was keen to point out, like, look, we're uh, doing a lot of cool stuff now in mobile with the Samsung partnership, which was, you know, the, it, was, it wasn't explicitly mentioned a lot, but Samsung and mobile was kind of a thing. And Anantech just recently published an article that talks about how that is more than just an IP licensing partnership. So they really have got the journalism right on that, which is, which is pretty cool. That's a story for another day. I just wanted to mention it. But also AMD is working on consoles and Stadia, in, you know, in the cloud and all of their other stuff. We even heard a little bit about their longer term ray tracing strategy. So uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. But Zen 2, there's new instructions, the new cache, the new arrangement, the new branch predictor, Tage. We heard on stage that they weren't really planning to do the new branch predictor until Zen 3, but the engineering team busted their humps and got it in Zen 2. And that and the process improvements and a larger cache and all of these things are the things that are responsible for that IPC uplift. And we got a lot more benchmarks from the slides. We got a lot of benchmarks from AMD for things like, you know, everything from CSGO to PUBG to Grand Theft Auto 5, which Grand Theft Auto 5 is so old, you got to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. And the engine breaks past 140 FPS. So there's a lot of caveats and gotchas and stuff like that. We did get to go hands on but we didn't get to run our own benchmarks or mess with things. And the reality is that all of these things are launching on July 7th. There's probably a few more percentage points to squeeze out in terms of performance. Uh, Windows 19.03, so again, tangent here. Windows 19.03 actually has scheduler fixes in it for Zen to make them CCX aware. Somebody from Microsoft reached out to me about the Threadripper testing and was like, hey, can you retest on Threadripper? So I tested the Windows factoring 18.885, there's a forum post about that. And I didn't really, I saw a little bit of a performance uplift, but not a dramatic uh, uplift in performance. And now it makes sense. It's like, oh, that was probably because of these changes. So in terms of like instruction sets, there are, new, well not instruction sets, there are new instructions. And the new instructions have to do with helping things around virtualization. So I don't have details yet, but uh, things for uh, Hyper-V, VM isolation improvement, like Microsoft mitigations for hardware. Uh, they've added hardware mitigations for uh, some of the speculative execution stuff that was solved in software, things like the return trampoline. I think they said that the return trampoline was no longer necessary because of hardware mitigations. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Also, uh, there are instructions for getting metrics about uh, how the internal, um, I guess, cache system might be monopolizing the, the system bus or how an in individual process might be monopolizing cache routine, like cache hit, cache miss, so that uh, it gives an operating system hypervisor a little bit more control of picking and choosing and saying, okay, this process is starving all the other processes in the system because it's exhausting cache or because it's you know, doing a lot of memory fetches preemptively, preventing other things that actually need memory bandwidth. So these are the, these are more like enterprise features. 
but AMD is like, ah, it's coming across the whole stack. We also learned about Ryzen plus Vega. So the Ryzen plus Vega that we may or may not have seen at Computex. Um, now that is a Zen plus, not a Zen 2 core, uh, but soldered Tim on the Ryzen 5 plus Vega. So you're gonna have a lot more overclocking headroom potentially if you win the silicon lottery. One thing about seven nanometer that they didn't drive home enough was that seven nanometer means you get twice the density and half the power at the same performance or 1.25 times the performance at the same power. So it's a little bit of a bathtub curve. And we did hear from the engineering team that they did not expect to get the clocks that they did out of the new dies. I mean, 4.7 gigahertz at the very top end from the 3950X is incredible. Don't know what that means. Is that one core or two cores? Probably two cores. Don't know. We don't, don't have any details. Uh, the overclocking event, there was a liquid nitrogen overclocking event, and so they smashed a bunch of world records for like Cinebench and all this kind of stuff. But again, that is a uh, liquid nitrogen type situation. And when I was there, when they were just first getting started, you know, they were immediately at like 5.3 to 5.4 gigahertz. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the scheduler improvements and the driver improvements and some of that applies to existing Zen products, so that's pretty cool. Now, in terms of like gaming performance, it's really that IPC uplift. We heard from Lisa Sue, and you know, we heard from Lisa Sue at Computex, and it was like the IPC uplift is something that raises all boats. And for the performance numbers that AMD provided, it definitely does. Counter Strike. 34% faster on the Ryzen 7 3800X versus the Ryzen 7 2600X. Also heard from some AMD experts that said that the 3700X was an inflection point, 65 watts, eight cores, and the kind of performance that you know we're seeing from the 3700X. And I tend to agree for the reasons that I said in my last video, because that has direct applications to Rome, but also like sets a new low power standard. And AMD was pretty keen to point that out. Now, I haven't gotten to put my hands on these things in a way that I can share information with you or like run my own benchmarks. But they did have hands-on demos for stuff and uh, everybody at AMD is super excited about all things um, for the third generation Ryzen CPUs and pretty much everything else. Also this event is kind of a who's who of literally uh, like industry analysts and like big names, giants, titans of industry. It's very humbling. Like I'm an internet bozo. Don't you don't you guys ever forget that I'm an internet bozo? And uh, there are some seriously gifted and talented people here that are not just the industry analysts, but also uh, the engineers. Like the actual the actual engineers are among the people, um, sort of walking around and uh, you know doing stuff and talking and answering questions. And this was a uh, this is kind of nice. I mentioned the Tage branch predictor. There's a larger micro op cache now, 4K instructions, a larger L3. We've gone, you know, uh, <laughs> it's twice as large as Zen, uh, a large rename space, 180 registers, uh, three address generations per cycle, two loads, one store per cycle. That's not a change, but the address generator can feed that a little better. So two floating point units now. So you got two FMAX, so that's built as four pipes, two F add to FMAL, and it also now supports a single operation, single uh, single op uh, AVX 256. So it's pretty cool. The I cache is 32K eight way, the D cache is 32K eight way, and the L2 cache is 512K eight way. So the TLB has 64 entries and the L2 has 512 2K. Now everything but 1G. Now they made some changes here that I'm keen to test on Linux in terms of the, uh, the, the TLBs. There's also faster virtualization-based security with the guest mode execution trap. So this is, uh, I think this is the thing that we've seen Microsoft implement for Hyper-V. So again, something that I've got to actually like kick the tires on and do a test drive, something like that. The new branch predictor, 30% lower mispredict target rate. So it's pretty exciting. Decode improvements, the floating point unit improvements, integer execution improvements, load store improvements. The cache hierarchy is a little, uh, a little bit better. There's some new terminology here. We've, we've heard of the CCX, that's your four core compute complex. The CCD is the name for the chiplet. So the CCD is the two CCXs, uh, and you've got your CCD, which connects to the, the IO die. Now all of your IO and memory is through the IO die. So everything, all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to the IO die. 
Infinity Fabric is, of course, uh, more awesome now. The bus width has increased from 256 bits to 512 bits for PCIe Gen 4. And uh, the latency, so it's been decoupled from F clock and U clock for better memory overclocking. So 3733 is going to be the sweet spot, and somewhere around there is where you go from the one to two, from the one to one to the two to one uh, bus thing. And so they had a nice graph where it's like, well, worst case scenario, 80 milliseconds, but 67 milliseconds uh, latency to main memory on their graph um, for the 3733 sweet spot, and then you know 3800 and beyond is like, eh, you might need the, the two to one. So you do that and you're immediately back up to higher latency and then it sort of trails off as you get faster memory. So depending on what your situation is and memory kit, that kind of thing, like 3600, 3600, 3733, somewhere through there is probably gonna be the sweet spot, at least based on their slides. Again, gotta test. And that's pretty much it for Zen 3. It's honestly very exciting. There's a lot of technical changes under the hood. There's a lot that I've glossed over here in the initial introduction. I have had an amazing brain dump, but I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible. That's everything's in. Let's talk about Navi. Navi is so misunderstood. Looking at you, random internet poster, commenter, people. Stop it, stop it. RDNA, RDNA, it's like, what is that? It's, it's like, ah. All of the AMD presentations were keen to distance RDNA from GCN. And, um, to the extent that some of the press and analysts were like, well, you know, why are you so down on GCN? And I, at the risk of oversimplifying, GCN is an incredible engine, but it is a very long pipeline. So in terms of like number processing, machine learning, that kind of thing, HBM2, it is incredible. Uh, but there's a term that came up a lot here called latency hiding. And so when you have these really long, uh, the, the long pipeline of machinery and a lot of it in parallel, you can hide the latency because it's like, hey, I need you to do a whole bunch of work. And it's like that guy at work where it's like, hey, are you doing stuff? Hey, are you doing, where, where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? I need my stuff. Hey, 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 hey. You know, we've all had that. And then all of a sudden, all the work is done. And so it looked like they weren't doing anything for like forever. And then all of a sudden, everything was done. So clearly, they actually were working. GCN. Navi uh, is very careful to offer a lot of the functionality from GCN, but in a totally new implementation. And a lot of uh, the implementation in Navi solves some of the bottlenecking type problems. Well, not really problems. I don't really call them problems because it's architectural. Uh, Navi's architecture goes in some different directions. And so it's kind of ground up in, in that respect in terms of how it's going to service and retire the instructions. The other really interesting thing is that the engineering that's going into Navi actually borrows some of the stuff from the CPU. So like the S cache implementation, and now we've got an L2. And so we've got these dual execution units, like 20 of them, but they're dual execution units. So at least with the 5700 XT, so it's like 20 dual and you have 80. So uh, it's a really, it's a really interesting situation. And this is a hardware architecture that is um, more akin to what game developers are expecting. So the other thing was the like, miners and data science people, no problem with adopting GCN to do great things. Game developers, uh, not so much. And so a lot of game developers are really super excited about Navi. And both cards, the 5700 and the 5700 XT, are gonna be eight gigabytes. These are designed to be, um, I think mid-market cards. Uh, I don't have pricing, like we have to, at uh, the, the time I'm recording this, I don't have pricing yet. So the 5700 XT is 40 compute units, 200, uh, 2560 stream units, 9.75 teraflops. That's pretty good. I mean, Vega, uh, Radeon 7 is what, like 13 point something teraflops. So we're getting pretty close. Eight gigs of GDDR6, 1905 boost clock, 1755 game clock, and 1605 base clock. Now the game clock is something that's uh, a lot of people are going to get wrong. Basically, the game clock is, AMD has sampled 25 games. I'm getting the list, I don't have the list yet, but it's a mix of AAA and eSports titles. And it, the, the thing with the game clock is like, look, if you're running these 25 titles, the popular titles, we've done the testing, and your game clock is going to be about this. So, uh, 
the base clock is like the worst case scenario clock. And so if you are not seeing clocks of around the game clock, especially for those 25 titles, chances are there's a thermal problem in your case. And they're doing some really innovative stuff with their, their software stack. One of the, the most mind-blowing things is Scott Wasson's demo of reduced input lag. So like there's the old demo where like somebody's got an Apple II and they hit a key on the Apple II and then the letter appears on screen and the latency is like, you know, 10 milliseconds or 15 milliseconds. And on a modern computer, like if you're just in a word processor and you hit the letter A and then how long does it take until the letter A appears on the screen? It's actually kind of a long time. So Scott Wasson has uh, modified OCAT and there's some Arduino based hardware timer things and they've optimized the um, the driver stack, especially for Navi, but this also actually applies to other graphics cards as well. And not every graphics API, so uh, there will be more details about that, but it doesn't necessarily work with, with every graphics uh, API yet. But this stack is designed to um, lower the input latency by not letting frames back up. So what happens is sometimes the CPU gets a little ahead of the GPU, and then when the buffer is flushed, it's running you know, a frame or two behind where the processor actually is. And so they can save about a frame of latency. And the demo, at 60 hertz anyway, was convincing enough that yes, they are actually doing something pretty innovative here. Uh, for esports titles and like fast reaction time, that kind of thing. Fanatic, I think those guys probably know what they're talking about. And they had some quotes and some experiences from the Fnatic, you know, esports gaming, like those guys. Um, and they're like, yes, this is good. This is a good technology. 5700 XT, according to their own slides, has a significant performance uplift over Vega 56. So things like Apex Legends and Wildlands and, and Civ 6, even Metro Exodus and Grand Theft Auto show a small uh, uplift. And that is at 1440p. So again, got to do more testing and there's you know it looks good I'm convinced but got to play with it I also want to talk for a second about fidelity FX AMD looked at what the competition was doing with things like the DLSS and a whole bunch of other technologies to improve the render quality of the game and fidelity FX is a content aware sharpening or contrast aware sharpening so if an area of the image has a lot of contrast, not going to sharpen. But if an area of the image doesn't have a lot of contrast, then uh, it will sharpen it selectively. And again, it's a very subjective thing, but the demos that they had set up look pretty good. It also, it's a weird situation because you've got DLSS and RTX, and those will really tank performance. And this is a relatively low overhead approach to dealing with image quality. and so. You could run 1440p and upscale it and do this kind of a, this kind of a thing for, for image quality. It actually looked really good, uh, really good in comparison to the competition. So this is something I really, we've got a 2080 Ti you know, flagship, and this is something that I really want to do side by side. I have a feeling that um, the better comparison is going to be with like the 2070 and the 2060 class cards in terms of like what kind of a, gaming experience can you what kind of gaming experience can you expect in terms of fidelity probably why they call it fidelity fx big thing found my new monitor asus 43 inch 4k 120 hertz display port compression it's like the new compression thing it's display port 1.4 these cards support that so single cable 8k up to but 4k 120 hertz for the cards but asus finally my dream monitor 43 inches 4k high refresh rate I'm going to pre-order this monitor. There's also the Radeon 5700. That's 36 compute units instead of 40. 7.95 teraflops, 8 gigs of GDDR6, up to 1725 boost clock, 1625 game clock, and 1465 base clock. Now remember, most under most scenarios and most games, you should see between 1625 and 1725 on your game clock and your boost clock. AMD did this because they feel like they're doing a better job with their boost clocks than the competition. And so they didn't want to create a situation where it's like, oh, the boost clock here is higher. And it's like, yeah, but you only get the boost clock on the, com on the competing card like 0.05% of the time, whereas these are relatively conservative. The base clock really is a worst case scenario, but all of this is tuned for like the top 25 esports and AAA, not really tuned, but like in testing, 
game boost, that's where it was. And so it's like, we're going to say that you should expect this unless you've got thermal problems or other problems like that in your case. There's a lot of other really cool, exciting things like the whole X570 chipset and PCI Express 4.0. I'm really excited about PCI Express 4.0. Uh, Fison is going to have their PCI Express 4.0 SSD ready to go at July 7th. It really can't be understated. AMD's done a really good thing with the chipset. It has bugged me since, I think I started complaining about it in Z270. I was like, well, we've got double that on AMD's platform and the uh, lanes past the chipset are also PCI Express 4. Now, if you have a lot of insanely high speed peripherals hanging off of the chipset, it's still potentially a bottleneck because you just have the one PCI Express 4.0 by 4 linked to the CPU, but those peripherals don't exist yet. When we have eight gigabyte per second M.2s that you can buy at every corner drugstore, then I will complain about the PCI Express 4.0 uplink to the CPU, but those days are not here yet. So, yeah. Plus also AMD's got the dedicated link, the dedicated X4 link for the NVMe. So, hey, look, they planned ahead. They thought ahead. Good job. AMD, it's so, it was so cool to meet everybody from AMD. Uh, shout out to Amit because I think I took a selfie with him and he was like one of the guys that works internally at at, uh, a at AMD. So kudos, good job. Everybody, good job. Gold stars all around. That was something Robert Halleck said. It's like, this feels like a giant startup company. And it's like, I kind of get that now. Like that kind of, it kind of does make sense. I, uh, I understand that Intel has thrown down the gauntlet here in terms of it's like, oh yeah, bring us your real world gaming scenarios. Intel's in for a fun ride this next year. I'm Wendell, this is level one, and I'll see you next year.